Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the, the uh, conference so far. And a uh, big thanks to Robert and the team for, for making this possible and setting it up. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just have a little platform just to to introduce things about myself and Model Borrow and some of the things we do. Um, I'm the business development for for Model Bio, so I'm going to spend a little time talking about uh, me and, and and some of the things that I do about Model Bio. Introduce you to to what what we do, what we've been doing for quite a long time now, uh, and we're going to take a, a little look at the solutions that we produce and talk about the evolving use of software in line with this concept of using samples. Uh, and I'm breaking it down into two factors that are important to me. I think that will be clear as we go along and, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of time just to jump into the software. I just want to show you one thing to um, get you thinking about. Um, and just a quick shout that there is a virtual booth. Um, feel free to visit it or send me messages, um, any questions or demonstration requests. But there is some downloadable material there. There's some information on on Embiolim's biobanking software, some of our press releases from, from different clients that we, we interact with. And there's also an article that I wrote with my colleagues that's due to be published in the next edition of Biopreservation and Biobanking. Again, there's a, there's a few themes in there that might be of interest, how different groups use this type of software and how they get their samples um, in front of researchers, in front of biotech. So just a little background in me, which led me to the, uh, the, the interest in, in, in the use of samples. Um, I originally started as a forensic scientist, and I did that for, for quite a few years working in the laboratory um, and also on the interpretation of DNA results. And this developed um, as technology developed into using software more to do that, uh, I helped to design some software to, to do that interpretation for the scientists, for the, the interpretation that I used to do. Um, and then we also um, introduced some databasing. So it, it, it introduced me to the world of science slash software. And I then worked around the world trying to, with other governments in forensics, trying to um, enhance the way they manage their samples, but more importantly, the data that goes with those samples. And in forensics, the key elements were the, um, the sample and data integrity had to be spot on. Um, and then the final use of those samples effectively was to either convict or pr prove innocence. Uh, and that was very heavily challenged, as you can imagine. So in court, we were questioned on, on every facet of um, the samples journey and all the annotations that were made. Um, and I started to work with uh, more providers that worked outside the scope of forensics and was introduced to, to biobanking many, many years ago. Um, and eventually then decided to join a company that worked in that industry. And what I was interested in doing is bringing the lessons and the transferable concepts across from the work I did in forensics. And they were effectively the sample and data management. It has to be exactly the same. It has to be um, uh, the custody, the, the management, the processes, the who did what and when all has to be tracked in the same way. And then the endpoint in this industry is slightly different. And the, the endpoint is effectively the use of those samples and not just the use of them, but an effective use. And I'm going to talk about that in a couple of uh, little case studies. So the company I joined was Model Bio. Um, we've been doing uh, software for biobanking for over 18 years, and we specialize in this industry. We don't produce a generic limbs. It's it, all the work we do is within the biobanking cohort um, studies, clinical trials, industries. Um, so we provide our software to um, a range of biobanks, which I'll talk about, biorepositories, and also to some um, biotech directly, some of which have their own banks, some of which work closely with, with organizations that use our software. Um, and one of the reasons I was attracted to the company was um, there's a mixture of scientists and software expertise. And I found that really helped in, in, in any interaction, especially effectively from a sales point of view, which is some of the work that I do to have that scientific knowledge. And of course, I sit on the fence of um, science and software development. So it's, a, it, it's kind of a nice role for me. So over 300 laboratories use these solutions. Um, I've mainly been concentrating in, in the US recently. Um, I'm, I'm based in the UK, as I said at the start, but I, I, I do work elsewhere in the world. And Model Bio's headquarters is based in Marseille. And we've recently opened a subsidiary in Canada that supports our North American clients. So 
this is where we kind of fit into the jigsaw of this is um, we provide a, a few solutions. I'm mainly going to concentrate on mbiolims. So on the left hand side there, we've got biological samples coming into the, 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 the laboratory. Um, it could be other types of samples, obviously, as the picture denotes, but if we concentrate on human samples, from that moment of uh, the sample entering the, the system, the inception of the sample within mbiolims, that's when the, the management has to start. We're interested in high quality data, high quality tracking of, of what's happened to those samples. So we're talking the collection, whether that be from a hospital or a box arrives at the laboratory, to aliquoting, storage, processing, analysis results, SOPs used, which user did what at what time, what date, all of this needs to be tracked to produce that, that first step of having these, these high quality samples that we strive for. Um, connected to that is um, MBioLabel, which is a integrated barcoding solution, which basically allows you to print barcodes for everything that's uniquely identified. So again, we, we, we've got a full traceability of, of all samples, containers, kits, right, what, whatever our clients need to, to use. Um, and also you can scan those barcodes back into the system. So it provides a very easy way to work with them. One of the lessons I learned very early in forensics is, is to try and minimize any error. And again, scanning can, can, can really help with that. Um, so that hopefully then leaves us with um, a batch of samples with associated data, whether that be clinical or or um, test results, what, whatever the particular bank is interested in. And the, the, the key, as we've been talking about all today, is then how to get that in front of the right people so the samples can be used in the right way. So that's where um, uh, the in, EM Biobank tab comes in. Um, we do produce um, a web catalogue from time to time for people, or we work with their... Um, website to, to, to produce a way to push from our system using our API, the relevant information. And that might just be amount of samples. It might be specific sample information. And we are also working with other platforms, such as um, the, the fine work that Robert and the team are doing to, to get samples out of biobanks into platforms where the visibility is, is increased um, and the right people um, for, the, for the lab and, and for the research or the, the uh, industry. Are connected. Um, and then this is again managed in Embiolim. So you can manage the fact that there's been requests or inquiries. You can um, allocate people to work on those. Um, and then you, you can track the, uh, the shipment of those samples or the endpoint of those samples as well. Okay. So I'm just going to talk a little about um, the, the software and, and, and how it's used in some of these scenarios. So what we've built is a, a, a modular software so that our different clients can choose what's important to them and what they work on. Um, but in all cases, it's dedicated to this management of samples and associated data. So it does evolve. We produce different modules. We have a new version that's coming out um, very soon as well. Um, and it's a very personalized system. You can design a lot of things in it yourself. You, you start working with new sample types. You, you have a new freezer or a new cryo tank. All of this can be can be built in. Um, and it's very intuitive that the interface is, is very pleasing to the eye and very easy to use. Um, and it's it, it can be connected to different um, robotics, different uh, databases. And as I said, we have an API which allows you to move relevant data out, around. And if we just have a quick look at the wheel on the left, um, again, the, the, the examples of clients we work with is so varied, but here we've got, you can potentially work with patients, the, the actual collection of the samples, the work on the samples themselves, whether there's any uh, integration with robots, analysis results, course storage, um, and then requests and shipping. So how these samples are, are, are then being used whether that be in research or, or biotech for new therapies and precision medicine. And everything we've done, all of our requirements that we've, we've built and our modules that we've, we've added to has been on the back of working with biobanking clients. So we've tried to build a system that mimics exactly what a biobank needs. Um, this is just a quick um, screenshot of the dashboard and some samples that we're working with on the right hand side. But we also found it really useful to build in a messaging system, a way that um, the users can share information with each other, whether that be a search or a, a, a batch of samples. 
um, and they also have the ability to to query, which is the, the thing I'm hoping to end on if we we have a little bit of time in the system. So there's a range of of cases um, throughout our biobank clients, and this this is probably the simplest one. This is a a single bank um, that that works directly with a, a hospital, maybe within the hospital. There's a, a team of users that are collecting that data. Um, they either collect directly post-surgery or um, it's it's delivered in a box to them and they can have an HL7 connection to their, their hospital system as well. So th this is a very common um, type of, of bank that we work with um, where they they manage the samples, they annotate them, they they set them up to be as high value as they, they, they can be. Um, and then of course they're ready for request. And that's the 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 block that a lot of these labs have that they have their samples excellently managed, um, ready to go, but it's it's advertising that or finding um, the 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 right target audience to see them. Um, it can be a bit more complex than that. So uh, it, this could be an example of a a, a clinical trial or a uh, a client that has multiple collection sites. But again, um, what we, we do is introduce those nodes you can see are collecting sites. They have access to the software. Um, that, uh, that means real time, everything's being captured. The central site that stores the samples knows that samples will be on the way and can track it in the system. And we've got a lot of people that, that, that use this kind of setup, including for longitudinal trials as well. So they, they, they repeatedly take samples. Um, and I've just highlighted one in yellow to indicate that that would be a collecting site that doesn't have access to Enbiolims for whatever reason. And again, they're losing a little bit of functionality there because they, they, they're not getting the real time data, but they'll, they'll have the, the sample shipped to the, the collecting site and then the samples will be entered to the system. So again, it's a very um, common uh, uh, client setup. Um, and the management of the, the samples, the transport, the storage, everything again is is populated within the system. And that concept can exist in in a single building as well. That different teams collect from different areas or work on it independently. Um, I, I just wanted to to show that slide just to to emphasise that point as well. Um, but what I've been working on quite a lot in the last couple of years are kind of bigger scale, um, more um, involved um, clients that are working with different banks or, or different departments. So uh, kind of a first example of this is a, a national project that I've been working on where all the biobanks, all the, the government biobanks in the country are linked together under one Enbiolims, um, but they, they do operate as silos. They, um, they don't see each other's data. They can if they want. This can be set up in the system. But what this allows them to do is, is kind of standardize a little bit more, work on the same nomenclature and language, um, use the same type of, um, of processes where, where um, it, that works for them. And one of the challenges they'd had previously was when they are working um, with, with others to use the samples that they have, they were having to do four searches. Um, they were having to talk to four different people to to search those banks, some of which weren't very well managed at the time. Some were um, on Excel spreadsheets. So again, this gives you the opportunity to, when you do uh, interact with um, uh, either industry or researchers that have specific requirements, you can search across all four. So what we do is have, um, the main, in this case, the main bank has a supervisor view of everything. So they can search all three banks, or, sorry, all four banks at once, and then use Enbiolims to obviously request some internal shipments of those. Um, and then we've taken this concept to um, whole organisations, whole university campuses. Um, a couple of big uh, universities in, in America are, are building this at the moment where they have some of their banks already using Enbiolims. And they're slowly but surely moving more and more on. So the whole university campus and all the biobanks and departments that interact with the system are all on the same system and again a big driver here was was standardization i'm seeing that quite a lot in in universities in the last year um especially when there's lots and lots of different um ways of managing their samples different systems excel spreadsheets it makes it very difficult to look across all of the samples and start to work with them in a more collaborative way. And they're having some banks work directly with industry, um, some 
project their samples to a, a, a web catalog or a, or a different system, but it wasn't very lined up because um, there could be samples that are more viable in another bank that's not linked up in any way to any of that. So it's, it's quite an exciting enterprise. And uh, over the next few years, I, I hope we'll see lots of positive things from this. And um, I, I guess just another minor um, positive that the, the that's being reported is this concept of sharing of tools. So they they find a way to do something in the system or they find something that saved them lots and lots of time. Um, when the different banks are on different systems, it's very difficult to translate that to something useful for them. But if you're all on the same system, then uh, again, they, could, they can share that with their colleagues. Um, and a, a couple of points just on um, specific disease projects. I, 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 Robert was talking about this very early in the day. Um, there's a couple of good examples here because these, these um, a, a particular one we're working with on, on AWS, um, sorry, um, ALS, um, they work very closely with that disease. They collect samples from different places um, and they have, they already have um, the biotech and the researchers linked to them. But again, they needed a way to, to, to manage this across the board. So the different teams all use Embiolims. Um, they collect their samples, they annotate them, but they don't have visibility of the other sites. They work in silos to collect those samples. And then the, the darker blue node in the middle, which effectively doesn't do any of the, the collecting or sample work itself, is, is just a, a supervisor search site. So that's where, when they're working with people, who are investigating the disease, they can then look at all of their nodes, find the, the best samples, and then um, start to operate in that way. Um, and another one that I'm working with, which is kind of an a opposite problem um, to some of the things we've discussed over the, the course of today, is um, they're working with a very, very rare disease where there's not many people that have it. So the, the amount of samples they've managed to collect are very, very limited. Um, and it's probably something I'm going to talk to Robert offline a little bit about later on, but their concern is they want to manage the samples in the best way, which they're, they're, they're now doing, but they want to provide the highest value for those samples. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking a monetary value, I'm talking the highest value for how they will be used. If there's not many of them, they want to make sure it's going to the right people for the right studies, for the right um, investigations. Um, and they're finding it very useful that they can manage those those requests um, and and really filter through them to decide what's what's best for them. Um, so, just one quick slide on the software, and I'm just going to show you something in the software quickly, and then we can certainly open it up to to some questions. So, th this can be done in in different ways. It's installed uh, on a server of some description. It's either a customer IT on premise, or they have a hosting solution that they want us to install on, or they ask us to source a hosting. We never host the data. It's always one of the, the big hosting companies if they do ask us to do that. And as you've seen, this can be simple or multi-site deployment. Um, and it really depends on, on, on the client interest. Once it's installed, it's local browser access, really easy to use. Um, and of course, it's uh, it, it can be very confidential. We can use VPNs if needed. And um, because of the level of auditing and the traceability, which was one of the key things when I first joined um, in, uh, Model Bio, that, that they're all in the system. So um, that that allows people to to um, match it with their certification projects. Um, running a little low on time, so I'm just going to jump into the software quickly. I did have some more slides, but I can certainly share them um, uh, outside of this meeting. Um, I'm just going to switch my screen. And hopefully you should now be able to see um, the, the the dashboard of, of, of Mbiolims. It, it updates every um, 30 seconds just with anything new. This is obviously a mythical biobank I've set up. Um, and what just one of the very quick things I wanted to mention was we've we've introduced what we call a non-compliance system, which um, allows you to, in in a lab to label um, samples that have an issue. And I think this very often doesn't happen when um, people are looking to store their samples and segregate them. So some of these issues may be very minor and don't affect anything. Some of them may be more major or perhaps 
affect a particular type of research or a particular type of of um, investigation. So we found this very useful that you can start when you're searching for samples or you're trying to give them to people. You, this is one of the factors, one of the many factors that you can use to start segregating that data as well. But I just wanted to show you one quick thing. Uh, obviously, the, the system set up to do everything that biobanks do, collection, process, storage, shipping. But at the end of that process, um, it's the, the we found people that um, want the samples. How do we locate them? What do we do with them? So I was just going to show you a very quick query that I built. You can do this real time, but I've just saved it. I could share this with colleagues if I wish to as well. So this is effectively samples with a particular characteristic. Um, they're the ones that I'm interested in. I'm interested in active ones. I don't want depleted or destroyed or things that have a non-compliance. I um, want a certain amount of volume and it, it needs to be a DNA sample for the purposes of the argument. Um, and then I build the um, results. And what that gives me is then a real time look into whether I'm looking at one bank or across all of the banks I'm involved with, two samples that match my criteria in two different studies, one of which um, I don't actually have access to the storage location because it's on another site. But then that allows me to either dig into the detail a little more, share this with a colleague to go and get it from um, the, uh, the, the freezers. Um, and I can drop these into, I'm going to leave that one there because I don't have access to it and drop it into a, a sidebar. I can then drag and drop that into a shipment to whoever wanted it or send it to a colleague, um, aliquot it before it, it goes out. So again, this this side of once that, that link to um, biotech is made, the, the, the ability to find the samples that match is, is, is very important to me as well. It's It's a little bit more difficult to solve the second part, but uh, uh, Robert and many others are, are, are doing their best. So yeah, very little time left. Just wanted to see if there's any quick questions I could go over, but feel free to contact me afterwards. Mike, I, I've got a, um, a question if I may. Sure. Um, I was very interested to hear you talking about uh, projecting up the contents of um, a, a module biodirectory to mm -hmm. a uh, to a catalogue or to yeah. a directory, uh, because um, we we actually have a, um, a a buyback directory on the Biosample Hub platform, and um, you know there's always the question of how much detail you ask the biobanks to provide. Yeah, and you know you, you want to you, you want enough information to make it uh, to make it uh, interesting and uh, you know to to suggest possibilities. Uh, but if you ask for too much detail, uh, it's impossible for the biobank to keep it updated. It's so that's right. why, you know, I, I was thinking, well, if if you could project up from one of your um, module bio um, catalogs to um, a uh, to, to a, a, a online directory, then it would make it possible for people to come to that directory and well, maybe not for all the biobanks on the directory, but for a few uh, to drill down and find out exactly what they have. Yeah, it, it, exactly that. I mean, we 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 use the API to pump information out into various things like this, and it could be how many blood samples have you got, how many DNA samples. It could be really limited um, because it's a specific disease, and that's all people need to know. Or it could be a little bit more complex. And what one of the things I always recommend to the clients who are looking to do this, however they're looking to do it, is don't do too much information on that first hit. Because when people are looking through the sample information that you've projected, if if it's too complex, it's going to put people off. And also people use different nomenclature. So if, if it's very, very specific to the lab, it might not mean anything to the biotech guys or the researchers looking at it. But that that push of information. Um, it, even if it's minimal, I, I, in, in my experience, I've seen positive results, whereas if you don't have that exposure, you're relying on people, you know, emails, phone calls for people to find what, what samples you have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we have two questions. If you have time to answer. Yep, I see them. Um, so, um, there's a question on on ISO. Um, the the features really are, are based around the fact that everything's audited and you can export that that um, that information and, and interrogate it. Um, it's obviously very secure. 
um, uh, it, it, it follows all the guidelines there. And, and just just off the record, we're, we're looking to get for the software itself ISO, ISO compliance as well. Um, cost is a little bit more difficult. I can certainly talk to you um, offline, but it, it's so dependent. You saw the different examples of clients we have. They, the range in costs is, is big compared to um, uh, a small lab and enterprise system across an entire campus. But yeah, I can certainly, uh, uh, if, you, if you want to just send me an email, I'll certainly get back to you on that. Um, and on the second question, working on rare specimens, is there a module in the software that creates an alert of the availability for a new sample within a national network? It's it's an interesting um, question. I mean, it's 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 certainly possible. Um, the the guys that we work with that really work with rare specimens have got a, a, a handle set on it, and they can have using our reporting and statistics module alert set up. Um, you can also build in custom fields that. Um, allow you basically to design whatever alerts and, and information you need um and uh, from a national network point of view that 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 would be really interesting if if more people linked up to do that um uh, whether it's through uh, um uh, the api or, or it's actually sits on a on a biosample hub or something like that um that would that would be a, a excellent way for those to be flagged to the the, the industry in general Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have maybe other questions? Yeah, as I, as I said, if there are any, feel free to to, to contact me. I mean, maybe they can wait to and then they have maybe later questions. Definitely, definitely. And uh, thanks everyone for your time. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. And. Um,